Can we start this over? I do a better job. Hello, everyone. This is the Carlton Brown Foundation Show. I have a guest on the show today. As uh, everyone around Cincinnati is seeing, uh, Carlton Brown Foundation has been in the community, on the ground, uh, bringing economic choices and information uh, under the leadership and guidance of uh, uh, Friends of the African Union Chairman Herschel Daniels, Jr. I'm acting as the FAU Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, of Greater Cincinnati, Ohio, Director of Community Sales. Uh, we have some questions that the people would like to know in the community and the questions most asked uh, by the business owners and for the ordinary citizen. Uh, Mr. Herschel Daniel Jr., could you please introduce yourself, sir? Yes, my name is Herschel Daniels uh, Jr. I'm chairman of Friends of the African Union since uh, uh, January 16th, 2012. Uh, I'm also uh, the ex-chairman uh, of uh, Friends of African Unions Chamber of Commerce. I'm a, uh, the business development director uh, currently at the uh, chamber, and I'm looking forward uh, to this uh, interview that we can enlighten the people and bring about economic development that begets social enlightenment. The floor is yours, Carl. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, well, the first question, you know, that I'm most asked you know, uh, by the people, is uh, what is uh, uh, the FAU Chamber of Commerce and what information can you give uh, the consumer of receiving uh, the financial investment that the Carlton Brown Foundation through being a director of sales to the community and, and the street team, uh, is asking them and letting them know that they will receive $250,000 in their business uh, and the investment process and why the investment process is doing this and what it's supposed to do. All right, so what, what we did is, is that uh, as a chamber of commerce, like any chamber of commerce, our job is to promote your business. Uh, one of the things that we have is on a... Uh, 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 in your input, uh, and uh, we can do a, a full workup uh, of your business. Uh, and so when we do that full workup in your business, uh, you go to the front of the line as a member of the FAU Chamber of Commerce in our request uh, for funding. And our request for funding initially was uh, through the federal government and through the Universal Periodic Review, uh, which said that uh, America had problems. And the number one problem was, and humanitarian, was racism. And so we proposed a solution that said that for a million uh, businesses, uh, that they should receive $250,000 investment uh, from our government. Uh, subsequent to that, though, we have uh, created, uh, as members of NCRC, we have two agreements with uh, banks that serve the region. They're community benefit agreements. They started in January. The first one is with Key Corp, and that's the larger one at $16.5 billion over five years. And then you have Huntington Bank shares with $16.1 billion over five years. Both programs start in January, and as a member of the chamber, we're gonna hold classes to get you ready uh, to go to those two low-hanging fruits uh, of uh, banks that uh, could uh, make an investment in you. Okay, uh, sir, if a person uh, has $1,000 or, or the process specifically, is it $100 uh, for 12 months? Uh, or if they pay the 1000 they get a benefit? Or is it just $100 a month to equal 1000 Yeah, so uh, the uh, membership for the uh, uh, chamber is a minimum of a thousand dollars, okay, and uh, that thousand dollars can either be paid up front, in which you get uh, the extra benefits uh, for this, uh, and uh, that you get a uh, membership uh, in the nonprofit uh, National Community Reinvestment Coalition, and you get updates and uh, notices of events, as well as uh, you get. Uh, membership in uh, the uh, local chambers, but you also get representation in the Small Business Administration, the Minority Business Administration, and other government agencies that you may want to sell to. The federal government buys $500 billion worth of goods and services each year. 
and President Obama on his term in office has uh, the ability to influence uh, the purchase of $700 billion worth of goods and services. You may be one, and we won't know until we sit down, but that's a $1,000. Now, at $100 a month is pay as you go, as we like to call it. That means each month you pay $100 and uh, you get uh, access to the workshops, seminars, online uh, conference calls uh, that are exclusive to Chamber of Commerce uh, members, as well as uh, if you're an entrepreneur and starting out and want to get a taste of us, uh, that's a great way to do it. Uh, yes, sir. One of the uh, other most... Uh, uh, pause, please. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. One of the most uh, frequently asked question is, if I get and decide to invest in this plan of action that you're offering the first 100 people at the FAU chamber at the Chase Bank downtown right now, the first 100 people, uh, uh, the most frequently asked question is, what other assets will they receive along with that to help them and assure them that they will be able to to implement a process of a business that large, and how much will assistance will they get? Well, uh, again, it's a membership in FAU. It's not an investment. It's a it's well, it's an investment in a membership in the FAU Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we bank at uh, Chase Bank, and uh, the benefits they get they get immediately from there. Uh, we would be sitting down with them to do a, a business profile and work up so that we would find out what are their needs, what are their specific needs. We take them uh, through a process uh, uh, that includes a uh, financial look uh, with our uh, uh, CPA, okay, to take a look at their business. We also, uh, as part of that $1,000, they become uh, members, uh, they receive legal uh, support for a year. Okay, and, uh, and so that uh, any agreements uh, that they would enter into uh, would cost them uh, more than just the membership. Okay, and uh, furthermore, uh, we make sure that they have access. Okay, so let's say if you, you're in business already and you're having problems, okay, uh, with uh, zoning. Uh, well, one of our members is an engineering firm and you would receive a discount, okay, from them uh, to uh, uh, help you with your zoning issues. And maybe it may be something that uh, you may not even be charged on uh, because it may be just a simple uh, you showing up and saying, hey, I have an engineer uh, rel relative to the city, and the city may, may or may not uh, drop it, but in any case, uh, you'll have support of an organization uh, that uh, if I need to draw on additional help, I've got over 70 people in our office in Washington, D.C., in the National Community Reinvestment Coalition that I can call on for helping uh, you as a member of my uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Yes, sir. That is an excellent uh, analogy and, and explanation to assure people that we are implementing a true and a process of change uh, that I, I think a lot of people have been praying for. Uh, we're going to go on. Uh, also, another frequently asked question is, uh, how many and what is the goal of FHU Chamber and how many businesses in the African American community will they be uh, investing into and offering this service? Well, right, right now, I'm, I'm looking at getting the first hundred <coughs> members in, in Cincinnati. My goal is to uh, have a thousand members here in Cincinnati. Yes, sir. And so mm -hmm. that, that will then uh, let me hire uh, the uh, paid lobbyists so that we would have a uh, professional lobbyist, uh, uh, you know, here in, in the state house uh, uh, talking about our businesses, okay, and uh, working together with the other uh, programs that are in place. Uh, the advantage that you have as a member 
is that I know uh, a lot of the programs that are out, and if I don't know a program that's out that can help you, uh, then we can find out. Like I said, we have over 70 staff members in our national organization that we are a member of, the National Community Reinvestment Coalition. Yes, sir. Uh, also, uh, we're going to move on to the next question. Okay. Uh, I just heard about the meeting, you know, I've been attending the conference calls, you know, and I, I am absolutely uh, very impressed uh, by the chief of staff, Yonel, and his briefings to the nation and answering uh, and being there to answer the country's questions under your leadership and guidance, sir. Uh, one of the questions I want to ask, because, you know, this is a historic meeting just happened, and, and I want a lot of people around the world who... Uh, my relationship with you has caused them to be inspired and have hope for the future. They are asking this question. What about the African new leadership? Uh, King Joseph de Boas, one at a time, um, Wadu leader, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, yourself, and uh, the New Future Foundation, uh, Dr. Dolores Blakely. Can we get an understanding of the sixth region, when you talk about it, and the the new African leadership that you are now, and uh, just explain a little of the functions, the meaning of the slave trade photo, and the significance of everything that we're doing. All right, so Friends of the African Union was created uh, because of uh, Ambassador Ali. Uh, the uh, African Union is 54 nations, 1.2 billion people in Africa, created in 1963 as the Organization of African Unity. Uh, I served as a staff member to the Senior Honorary Consul from the country of Guinea to the United States in the 90s. Uh, when I was called back to service uh, by Mother Africa was by the ambassador who now represented the African Union uh, to the uh, United States. And so uh, she called us together and we joined into a National Unity Council and I waited for action. And I waited for action. And I still waited and then uh, the State Department uh, gave us uh, authority in 2012 to be at the U.S. Africa uh, Business Summit and that was just after uh, Africa and uh, thank you South Africa had brought us all together and had passed uh, a resolutions and a diaspora summit that said we recognize that there is a sixth region in the people who do not live in the continent but have an African heritage. Whether or not they're continental Africans uh, who are living in the diaspora or what they call the historic uh, African diaspora, those of us who uh, grew up as descendants of the transatlantic slave trade on July 16, 2012, uh, the uh, action happened that they recognized and approved the report. Now, that was just approving the report. Now the work started, okay? So the next year, 2013, uh, the African Union called us to the table. Remember, in 2012, the U.S. government called us to the table uh, to be among those who were going to do business with Africa, the U.S.-Africa Business Summit. Now, in 2013, Africa called us to a meeting to review their 50-year plan, we went in and said, oh man, 50-year plan, that's great. You got it, unification. Oh, and by the way, here's ours, okay? And uh, yeah, we, uh, by that time, we had heard from anybody and the Unity Council, uh, so we had wrote President Obama, he had wrote back, and so we uh, then in 2013, October 8th through the 10th said, uh, good. You have a plan, we have a plan, and these other people you called, okay, uh, one other person has a plan on the scope of where we have, which was New Future Foundation. And so when we went to this meeting with the African Union, they put us in charge of the economic uh, 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 roundtable and put me on the reparations roundtable with Dr. Dolores Blakely of New Future Foundation. And so that's when we first got to know each other. And, uh, you know, she's been living up in the United Nations for reparations for decades. 
whereas I come from uh, a different modality in terms of uh, what does the law say? What, how do we get about reparations? And, and you know, we, we're not about doing the same thing that's been done 40 years, okay? And, and you expect a different result when you had it go on the same thing. And House Resolution 40 to us was the same thing. You, you apply for it, and, it, and for talking about a study on reparations, instead of doing it, okay? Uh, but it requires a congressional action. So in 2014, we looked around and then the United Nations. We said the United Nations, this is what the United States said in the United Nations, and we summarized it. And we read the hundreds of pages on it and where the world is talking to each other and judging each other in the United Nations. And President Barack Obama said our number one problem, our number one problem in the United States is in a humanitarian problem is racism, discrimination. Okay, he said our number two problem is our criminal justice system. Then he said our number uh, three problem is indigenous issues. Now, when, when he said all, all that, and he said the, these ten areas, but he said those three right there, racism, that's the number one problem in America. So we looked around and said, okay, who's got solutions? Who's got solutions? Who? Wow, nobody proposing any solutions in the United Nations. Okay, oh, a couple of brothers, okay, and a couple of organizations are, but nobody's proposing a solution that he can implement. Yes, and so we said, okay, Mr. President, in our solution, we, we, and then we said, oh, we got to be qualified in the UN. So New Future Foundation, which has been up there for decades, agreed to take uh, a, a joint venture in the United Nations. We did the joint venture. It was accepted by the uh, United Nations and our solution to institutionalize federal government racism says we put money in the hands of the transatlantic slave trade descendants and those Americans who have been discriminated against since 1868 because of racism. Okay, and so uh, with the, those criteria in hand, uh, that's what we uh, have been negotiating with the uh, U.S. government, uh, meeting with the State Department who this went in through. And in the interim, uh, negotiations and NCRC has signed uh, over uh, $32.6 billion worth of community benefit agreements. And uh, we have, uh, you know, while we were at 40,000 feet with the UN, we're down on the ground with the banks, okay? How can you move that money into our community? It says community benefit agreements, but we want to make sure that uh, the community that benefits looks like me and you. Yes, sir. Long-winded answer, but there it is. No, sir, not long-winded. You know, we need we need that accurate, up-to-date information because, you know, one of the, the things that I've been going through with the community, especially the African-American community, you know, they've been checking out the information and because uh, nothing they felt was tangible was there, uh, they felt like they didn't need to act on the, the 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 information and didn't take it as an urgency. And now, uh, well, uh, well, let me, let me give you the urgency of the situation. Yes, sir. Where we're at. And, That's what we know, need. The urgency is, mm-hmm. is that we're supposed to send a delegate to go to the uh, United Nations in Korea, uh, where they're deciding uh, how youth are going to be uh, treated around the world. Okay. All right. So this is a meeting where we, we through New Future Foundation, uh, can go to join the 66th meeting from the UN, okay, uh, non-governmental organization conference. It's entitled Education for Global Citizenship, Achieving a Sustainable Development Goals Together. So we would have a seat at that table. So if we can get uh, our senior Queen Mother, Queen Mother Dr. Dolores Blakely, who yes, holds a PhD from Columbia University, one of our young people and one of her young people will go together uh, over to this conference. And we have more than a voice, okay, uh, crying out in the wilderness. We have a seat at the table. And so it would be a shame if we, we couldn't do this and send somebody who has a seat at the table so that they could be there at, at the table. 
that's one thing. Second thing is, is that uh, in New York, uh, we just had the first United Nations meeting, and uh, there was cost overruns and yada, okay, and so uh, we need to plan for uh, uh, paying those costs off. But as important, we have June 19th and through the 25th at the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center, and that's uh, some uh, $55,000 uh, that we're going to uh, uh, need just to uh, reserve the space, hold it, and uh, plan for the uh, conference, okay? Uh, and that conference is going to be highly important because I told you about earlier about those first hundred, okay? And, but my goal is to get a thousand businesses here. And we're going to do that at that conference. We're going to hold daily workshops and seminars. We're going to have guest speakers and uh, we're uh, arranging for a surprise guest speaker on the uh, 24th and 25th that everybody will know. All right. So I, I would be so happy to have that support. You don't know how much my soul will rejoice to see somebody else picking up his banner because, boy, I have a light of change in my heart for this that uh, I see the future and it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, and uh, again, I'd like to thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I'd like to ask you this other question about uh, uh, how many jobs, this is a frequently asked question, how many jobs will the things that we're, we're, you're talking about implementing through Friends of the African Union, My Brother's Keeper, how many jobs do you think uh, with that and the FAU fame will bring to the city of Cincinnati, Ohio, because up on YouTube, I have the video up, and also on Carl Brown Foundation action page, of you talking to the people who will be coming to head up the infrastructure for the new TV stations, uh, and things like that. So, can you give a little information so we can give the people a little view of what may be upcoming, and so they can have some hope, and know, because this is real change, powerful change, and and this is it. So can you please uh, give us a little long winded of that one? Because that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So 20,000, our goal is 20,000 jobs uh, here in Cincinnati. Okay. So if you live in the public housing authority, then uh, we would be working with you using uh, Section 3. Uh, and uh, that's a HUD program, uh, and uh, uh, what's the difference in our program than others, even if you are an employee, we help you start your small office, home office. Okay, uh, FAU membership is free, uh, chamber membership is not. Okay, uh, but the, uh, uh, we, we have the arrangements so that third parties pay us. You don't have to pay us uh, for these uh, programmatic, okay? Uh, so that's what we're putting in, in place uh, for you, okay? Uh, if you're a part of uh, the Public Housing Authority, you can get uh, third parties will, will pay the money. Uh, in general, what we're doing, like I said, the 20,000 jobs comes from construction. Okay, uh, that, that's the, the focus, uh, to bring the construction, bring the sewer project, which is the biggest uh, project in the county, between 3 and $4 billion to finish it, okay, is a lot of jobs. The uh, Department of Labor says per thousand, you're going to create 25,000 jobs, excuse me, per million. Uh, I'm wrong again. Per billion you're going to create 25,000 jobs, and if this is a uh, $4 uh, billion dollar project, uh, that means over the next decade, just that project alone has the potential to create over 10,000 jobs. Uh, yes, okay. sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, that is absolutely uh, powerful economic uh, information for this city. Uh, and... Uh, uh, bringing that type of uh, thing to the community is something that will benefit uh, not only the African American community, our Spanish population, but will also benefit the European uh, uh, community. So, because uh, I'm very excited uh, about this. Uh, and uh, also, I'd I like to go on to uh, this next one right here. Uh, How will Plan Cincinnati and 
the redevelopment of the city, which I talked about, FAU fame, the new headquarters, uh, Hardgrove Engineering, uh, 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 Roe and, and, and your engineering company and what's going on with that. And, and how would that affect the African-American community and the redevelopment of the African-American community and give people a reason to want to get more informed, to get on the conference call and the websites and all that stuff, sir? Um, first, whether your orientation is jobs or business, we're, we're going to reinforce that. Okay, we're, we're going to uh, work with you uh, to be in business. And if you're not in business, we're going to work for you with you uh, so that uh, you can take advantage of the resources of the community. Uh, so that, uh, uh, but at the same time, we're putting in a program uh, where you can be part of in terms of your business being a membership. And so that membership uh, gives us uh, funding uh, necessary for us to then lobby for you. Okay, give you information, access, be your representative. You know, when we sit down uh, before city council, uh, then we're, we're sitting down not just by ourselves, but from 20,000 uh, potential job owners, from uh, 1,000 uh, uh, businesses that uh, employ those uh, potential job holders. Uh, so, you know, it is a win-win situation as far as we can see. I can't speak uh, to uh, anybody else. Yes, sir. Uh, I also wanted to move on, you know, to, and I want you to also touch a little bit. Just give us a summary on what FAU fame is uh, and how it will affect the African-American community and teaching the youth about this type of industry and, and how to do business, not the entertaining, but the business. Right, right. Well, yeah, the, the business of fashion, art, music, and entertainment. See, FAME stands for uh, Fashion, Art, Music, and Entertainment. And I started out in the, that business, call it, 47 years ago. Uh, I was real young. We, we had a, uh, well, no, okay, let's call it 45 years ago. Uh, so we, we had uh, a friend of mine had a carrier current radio station, uh, DJ. Uh, we threw concerts uh, at Shaw High School where Bones, Stugs, and Harmony uh, uh, heard some music. Okay, I was a recording engineer back then at Agency Recording uh, Studios, did King Biscuit Flower Hour. And in, in my day, you know, being a tape engineer was an engineer's job. It wasn't just pushing a button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, so I'm reentering the business in general. But uh, what we've got to do is teach our kids the business of okay, fashion, art, music, and entertainment. They got to know what Prince uh, uh, died and to his day. He said, you know, own the masters. You got to own the masters. You got to own your intellectual property, and that's what, that's why we made sure in the chamber that we have embed in there legal advice. Okay, so that uh, you you are set up so that that corporation that you've set up now uh, would have all your intellectual property, and you now have control of it. And we we help you as much as you want us to help. But uh, if you post on Facebook or any other social uh, media after this declaration, then they can't use your stuff unilaterally because you're doing so as a uh, commercial service. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That was, uh, I mean, I'm just so excited because, you know, I've been studying for over two years, you know, people just don't understand. And I get so excited just to see something being implemented and they're not aware of what it is, you know, and I know what it means. Uh, yeah, and, and, and <laughs> I, I know what I, I didn't talk about. Plan Cincinnati. Yes, Go sir. to PlanCincinnati.org. That's the comprehensive plan for the city. Yes, sir. Now, the, when it was put, you know, we, I spent three and a half years working uh, to get that along with hundreds of other people in the city. And uh, what was too bad is, is that we didn't show up. Okay. Uh, most times the, the African American in the room was working for a government or a corporation. And so when we, we have a, a unique opportunity to update Plan Cincinnati and include us and make the changes in the community that we want to see for us and our children's children. And so uh, that's what we use as a base because it is the official plan for the city. Yes, sir. 
And, uh, and Car- Carlton, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, call it in a, a couple minutes because I've okay. got to get this. I, did, I just have one on. more question, so you can give the young men in the community who are some of the greatest rappers and entertainers who don't have a shot in the upcoming of the launching when you will be launching and need the 400 entertainers in the city. Uh, can you give them a reason, some type of summary or information can let them know that something's going to be implemented that will give them an opportunity to not only do what they love to do, but be financially compensated while doing it? Okay, so there's uh, two ways directly. Uh, one is uh, uh, sales, okay, uh, that uh, salespeople, okay, earn uh, uh, a uh, commission on sales. And the other is, is uh, we set you up so that uh, your business, okay, your multimedia business uh, goes forward and you own your masters, you own your intellectual property, okay, and going forward so that anybody who uses your property uh, otherwise, uh, there's not a question um, whether or not they have to pay you a royalty. The question is just uh, uh, what uh, royalty is. So if you go union, uh, this is AFM1, American Federation of Music, Okay, if we make sure that you get your BMI ASCAP, okay, uh, that you're set up uh, for uh, the digital online so that you set up your uh, accounts uh, with uh, Chase Bank right now and can get paid if people want to buy your stuff. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you. And, and just letting people know that that possibility and things is coming up. When could the people have an opportunity to think that some of this stuff will start to be implemented that includes these type of uh, African uh, uh, youth and, and young adults in the community? Well, we've actually been doing, uh, like I said, with Plan Cincinnati, we helped create it, okay? Now, now we're, we're getting it for, for the update. Uh, we're starting in the uh, Walnut Hills uh, community uh, and uh, uh, Madisonville. Uh, so we've been uh, uh, putting in place uh, right now uh, the tools to do that, and it will go public for the general public uh, who uh, may not be aware of us uh, in June. Uh, but we're running this right now with you uh, to, yes, uh, as you talked with the businesses and yeah. uh, yes, community, I'll uh, be available on Monday. Uh, to uh, uh, talk to uh, uh, personally, yes, and sir. then of course every night at 9 p.m. Uh, you can follow up and give everybody the number. And I, I appreciate your time that you're, you've given me uh, yes, to sir. do this, and mm-hmm. it's something that we can never recover. Uh, time is important, as I mm-hmm. say on the calls. Yes, uh, but if you will uh, uh, have people uh, tune in uh, to our uh, nightly calls, uh, on Monday, uh, we are talking about uh, leadership uh, based on uh, Du Bois family uh, leadership, and uh, my king, uh, King Du Bois, uh, okay. Uh, my king too. Uh, <laughs> uh, will will, will uh, okay? Uh, uh, will be there, okay? Uh, or more likely, he'll tell me to be there, okay? Uh, Tuesday uh, is United Nations uh, Women and uh, men as well as uh, the women's call. Uh, Wednesday is the Business of Africa. Uh, On Thursday is United Methodist uh, uh, men are joined in forces uh, with uh, the FAU men. Uh, Then uh, we have on Friday the elders call, and on Saturday uh, we're moving forward in one unity, as Garvey called uh, for, as we make peace, you know, our hashtag is we uh, make peace as profitable as war, or our Sunday hashtag uh, uh, is uh, hashtag UNUPR. You want to understand what President Obama said and our response to it, uh, that you go into hashtag UNUPR. Uh, again, we've been doing low-level stuff that and high-level stuff that has set us to this point, uh, whether it's at the meeting that we just came back from, the United Nations, or getting ready for Seoul, Korea, uh, for uh, the 66th annual meeting of the United Nations CSOs. Uh, we're there. We're, we are, that, that's what, when you talk about people who represent you, that's what we do. And uh, we hope that you 
find it worthwhile to do so in supporting us. And I look forward uh, to talking to you on Monday. I'm one minute past my my time. Yes, sir. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna, gonna I'm just gonna. Talk. I'm just gonna go out with a closeout with you. Let you hang up. Uh, we'd All like right. to thank you just, for addressing just the sure, people. Just, Carl, Carlton, mm -hmm. just make sure that you get the uh, the seven. You know, everybody knows they can call in at seven one two seven seven zero four zero one zero with an access code of seven six one five six eight. A uh, uh, pound every night at 9 p.m. to hear us talk. Yes, sir. I will implement that process uh, to this video. Also. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it, and thank you for your time. And thank you for just being you. Hey, with a great man comes great responsibility. See, it's one thing about actions. They only speak one language. They show you the truth because anything that people put action behind will manifest into the world of the living. Uh, like I said, you know, all the work that has been going on reminds me of an African proverb. If everyone does a little, it means that one does not have to do a lot. And before you knew it, we'll cross an invisible line because the impossible manner will, the impossible will manifest into the world of the living. Each one, teach one. And remember, even perfect people buy pencils with erasers on them. And everybody makes mistakes. But all have a potential for greatness. And Africa, welcome me to your land. Welcome me to your earth. Huh? And welcome me to be loved. Call to brain, in the streets, in the community. I might be coming to a state or a country near you. Hey, one man on me. I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a God who said he will take one and make it 100. So all I can ask you is keep watching the Carlton Brown Foundation and follow him and see if it manifests into my actions. <laughs> hey, whenever or whatever you're going through, remember our journey is the same. And it's not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about waiting. It's, it, it, it's about learning to dance in the rain. Hey, and uh, I'm going to keep bringing you that economic information. Because, see, we never have to be yesterday. It's a lot of work going on, a lot of stuff, high level, low level. We got to let these people do its work. We're all going through a difficult time. We're going it right now. But right now, the money is flowing for the African-American businesses. Even if you don't have a business and a thousand dollars, the Carlton Brown will help you put your plan together. You can call me. We can meet at anywhere, McDonald's, whatever, and I will help you put yours together, bring my equipment, and uh, I want to see you succeed. Because, see, I want for my brother and sister what I want for myself. That's a way of life. Like I said, Carlton Brown Foundation is going to be the change you see and see if that continues. And that, that unconditional love to see you succeed continues to manifest in my actions into the world of the living. I love you.